Hi, I'm Professor Lynn Ritchie. I've created a series of videos that will help you in being more successful in your intercultural interactions. We're going to be exploring three areas, culture, interaction, and communication or social linguistics. I'm going to introduce you to a series of typologies that will assist you in becoming more observant and more successful in your interactions. Many people are fearful of interacting with others who are different, especially if they speak a foreign language. When we use typologies, we can reduce this fear by recognizing our similarities, our commonalities, and our differences. When we recognize our commonalities, it is easier for us to be less judgmental of our differences and we can adapt our behavior to have more successful interactions. Let's look at typologies a little bit deeper. When we think about typologies, we can recognize that all sciences use typologies and taxonomies to observe the behavior of the subject matter that they are studying. When we use these typologies, we can be more objective in our observations. We can also replicate observations from other scientists. And we can observe the differences and similarities of the properties of various elements, like chemical elements, biological differences, human behavior differences. But every science is using some type of typology to classify the elements. One of the behavioral typologies that you might be familiar with is the personality type. In the USA, we often attribute the cause of individual behavior to personality. The Myers-Briggs type indicator is probably the most recognized typology to assess personality types and is widely used in business settings. In fact, you may already know your Myers-Briggs type. The MBTI identifies four key dichotomies that combine to create only 16 personality types. That's right, only 16 personality types in the whole wide world. Let's look at those dichotomies. The first one is extroversion, introversion. The second is sensing and intuition. The third is thinking and feeling. And the fourth is judging and perceiving. When we're thinking about these categories, how do we know that someone is an extrovert versus an introvert? How do you know when you run into somebody that is introverted or extroverted? When I used to, to teach this class face-to-face, -face, my students always classified me as an extrovert. And how they did that was they observed my behavior. However, as you'll see a little bit later here, I probably am more on the introvert side than the extrovert side. When research advances in a field, the typologies can become more precise, like the addition of a new element on the periodic table of chemical elements. In psychology, the five-factor model or the ocean model has gained in popularity to describe personality types. In fact, Researchers which suggest, cross-cultural researchers, which suggest that these personality dimensions are universal. And by that, I mean that they are found in every single culture, every single society. So we're down to five personality dimensions. If we're, we're beginning to classify people in terms of these dimensions, these dimensions seem to be applicable wherever you are in the world. Let's look at these five factors. The first one is openness to experiences. This is how cautious or curious we are. It deals with our intellect and our imagination. The second behavioral factor is conscientiousness. And this is how organized or careless we are in, in our day-to-day -day life and our day-to-day -day activities. Extroversion is the third factor, and this is how outgoing or reserved we are, very similar to the Myers-Briggs classification. Four is agreeableness, which is how friendly or challenging we are in our interactions with other people. And the last factor is neuroticism, or how nervous, confident we are. It is getting at the idea of emotional stability. 
you're going to discover that you are already using typologies in your everyday life as you assess your situations and your interactions with other people. I'm only going to be introducing you to some more formal concepts and language that helps you to organize your observations. These typologies have been created using research and statistical techniques that help us to identify behaviors that cluster together. And I'm going to present the very basic behind the typologies. I won't go into all of the statistical research that has gone into the development of these typologies. Just know that there's a lot. Let's go back. Let's get a little bit deeper so we, we truly understand what we're talking about when we look at typologies, especially behavioral and societal typologies. Let's take a look at that uh, five-factor model or the, the ocean model. What I want you to do is to first begin by taking the five-factor model personality test. I've included a link in the comment section, and it's also listed here in this video if, if the link doesn't work in the comment section. Be sure to record your scores and be sure to pause the video while you're, you're working on this part. Okay, it'll probably take you about 10 minutes. I would say there's 50 questions, so however long it takes you to read and assess those. And I have put my scores here so you can see who I am in terms of my personality type. Factor one, which is the extroversion uh, dimension, I am scoring 37 in the 37th percentile. And this means that 63% of the people who have taken this test score higher than I do on extroversion. So I'm more on the introversion side of the equation than I'm on the extroversion side in terms of my behavioral preferences. The second factor is that emotional stability or that openness to the neuroticism, emotional stability. I'm scoring 97 percentile on that. That means that I'm probably more emotionally stable than 97% of the people who have taken this survey. In agreeableness, that's how we present ourselves in a, in a situation. I'm scoring 51 because I can be friendly, but I also know that I can be challenging. I think that's the educator in me. In terms of conscientiousness, 28% of the people are more organized than myself. And in terms of intellect and imagination, only 9% of the people are scoring higher on that dimension than I am. That makes sense to me as a person that has a doctorate and as a sociologist, it makes sense that would be a high score. Now what I want you to do now, now that you get a sense of your personality and everything, I want you to, to take a step back and, and let's look at how useful this can be as we're interacting with other people and why we're using this information. I want you to go back to the survey and I'm going to write down the items on the survey. There's 50 items on the survey that you answered. And what I want you to do as I'm writing these out, I want you to begin to classify it into one of the five personality factors. Okay, once we get done with that, let's go back and look at those. And you can see if you classified them in the same fashion that I did. I'm only going to do the first 10, but I encourage you to, to do all 50 just to see how they cluster together. And, and then, you know, move the questions that you think all cluster together into one column and see if that doesn't help you as you're trying to identify the personality of others around you. They should work regardless of the country they come from or the subcultural backgrounds that we come from. Okay, for number one, I am the life of the party. I would classify that in terms of factor one, which is extroversion, introversion. Number two, I feel a little concern for others. I would place that in terms of factor three. That's our agreeableness, how friendly we are um, in an interaction. If we have an interest in people, I would assume we would be more friendly. I feel concerned for others. I would put it F3, which would be that agreeableness. I'm interested in people. This is where I had a little bit of uh, struggle. I would probably put it in F3, agreeableness. 
We'd have to have an interest to be friendly, I would think. But I could also see it as going into factor one, which is extroversion, how outgoing we are. You know, do we approach people and, and question them? Do we want to find out about who they are? Number four, I leave my belongings around. I would put that in factor four, which is conscientiousness. Number five, I am relaxed most of the time, which is F2. And that would be that neuroticism or emotional stability. Number six, I'm always prepared. That would be that conscientiousness, that organization. I get stressed out easy. That would be factor two, which is the neuroticism, that emotional stability. Uh, number eight, I have a rich vocabulary. That would be that uh, openness to experience, that intellect, that imagination. Uh, I don't talk a lot. That would be that F1 with the extroversion. And number 10, I have difficulty understanding abstract ideas. That would be F5, which would be the intellect and imagination open to new experiences. So as you can see, what we're doing is if we look at all of these questions, we can see that they all are related to our behaviors in some way. And that's all typologies are doing is they're clustering a, a series of behaviors and making that into introversion or extroversion. And we label those behaviors based on the clusters. So this is what we're going to be doing all semester long. It will give us a way that we can identify what's common. And then we can go back in and, and we can look at our differences. How many of you scored higher than I did on extroversion? And what would that mean for our interactions with one another if we knew that? Or how, how would you approach me if you knew that I might challenge you within our interaction, that I might confront some of your ideas? How would that impact how you interact with me? So as we begin to look at these typologies, we're going to get more and more information that we can use within our situations with, with, when we are interacting with other people to help guide us in adapting our behavior. As I said, you know, when I, I taught this face-to-face, -face, most of my students would identify me as an extrovert. But that was based on the behaviors that I was exhibiting within that situation. In my day-to-day -day life, I'm not extroverted. I am much more introverted. This is showing us that we can adapt our behavior depending on our situation. Okay, I hope you're going to enjoy this. Uh, we're going to be looking next time at uh, where did culture begin, and we're going to be looking at the ideas of Edward T. Hall. See you soon.